Hey guys, so tonight we are going to talk about modifiers. Modifiers are the way the game accounts for how fast the battle mech is moving, how hard it is for one pilot to aim at another, how hard it is to actually hit that mech when it is moving at uh, full speed or any other speed flying through the air through jump jets. Now, when you're using these modifiers, we'll start off by envisioning we are the attacker firing on a target. Now, as the attacker, we have a couple different options we can use. We can stay stationary, we can walk, run, jump, or go prone. Now, a battle mech just standing there is the same idea as someone standing on a range. You know, you're standing there, aiming at a target. All you have to do is keep the reticle on target, or keep your sights directly dead, dead center mass, and you just pull the trigger and shoot. So it's fairly easy to shoot. Now, when you're walking, you know, you got a slight, slight jostle, the, the reticle or sights are going to kind of sway a little bit. So it's going to be a little bit harder to make sure your shot is on target. Now when you're running, that's when things are starting to get a little, little bit harder. So you got to keep the sights on target and you got to hit. So, and this is all while bouncing around, getting jostled, the pilot's getting thrown around inside the mech, running full speed. So... That's going to be up to a plus two. It's going to be a little bit harder to shoot the opponent. And when you're jumping, let's just pretend we're using the 95 ton assault mech, the Peacekeeper. So this massive 95 ton machine is flying through the air, and the pilot has to control this thing while controlling its heavy weapons and aiming at a target that could be running or jumping itself and shooting them and getting these shots on target. So it's going to be much harder. Now, when a battle mech is prone, it's not really the way it was designed to be used. So, you have the battle mech, and it has to prop itself up on one arm, or it has to just try to aim an arm at someone, and it's going to be much harder to shoot, uh, just because it's not designed to be shot that way. You know, a pilot's seeing your battle mech looking forward, you know, then now the pilot's almost looking straight at the ground and trying to aim. So, it's a little bit more difficult with the plus two. So, if you're, as you're shooting at your target, your target may be doing different things. If your target is just prone, if you're in the hex right next to it, because that target is laying on the ground, it can't really do much to dodge any shots, all you pretty much have to do is aim at it and shoot. So you get a minus two. So it's, it's easier to hit. Now, if you're further away, two, three, four hexes away, or even further, you have a prone mech on the ground, but... You have to remember there's going to be micro-terrain and such. You know, just those small little hills that could possibly catch your rounds before they hit them. So it's going to be a plus one because it's going to be slightly harder to hit the target. Especially since it's a smaller target laying on the ground now. Now a mech is immobile when it's shut down or it's missing its legs. Basically can't move. So you got a mech that can't move. A giant target. And it's going to be much easier to hit. Basically just sitting there. And so next, you have just your regular movement. That all mechs are going to be doing most of the game. Now, if a mech is really slow or hasn't moved enough hexes, then they aren't going to get a defensive modifier. So your target's not going to have any, any movement defense. But once you start getting in the moving, such as 3 to 4 hexes or 5 to 6 hexes, you can start to see how the modifiers go up. So with a plus 1, your target's kind of walking, um... Just, just moving around a little bit. At plus two, they're starting to pick up speed and run. At seven to nine and 10 to 17, you're typically looking at light and medium mechs that are really hauling around the battlefield. So you got this small, a smaller machine running full speed and it's gonna be a little bit harder to hit. Now, you don't really see many mechs that can get up to 18 to 24 or 25 plus hexes. Those are gonna be your really light vehicles that I haven't, I haven't seen much in games myself, but they're out there and some players like to use them. So each mech has these modifiers. Now a house rule that is often used is to use smaller dice to identify what the modifiers are going to be. So we are, go we are going to see how that works out. On the board now, you see the Peacekeeper, the 95 ton assault mech, and you also see little blue and green dice. These dice can be bought at any local gaming store, and you get a whole bunch of them. So if you get to be in a game that has 
multiple lances of mechs in it, then you know you're going to need more and more dice to mark the uh, the attacker's modifier and the the uh, the mech's defensive modifier. So the way this this works is, and the good thing about this is that when you're waiting for more mechs to move, if you already know exactly what you want to shoot at, you can already start calculating the modifiers out. You know what your target's defensive modifier is going to be. You know what your attacking modifier is going to be. So let's just let's just throw some dice on here so we can see what it looks like. So as we saw before, walking is just a one modifier against the attacker. So we're just going to do that. So he's here. One, two, three, four. So we moved four hexes at walking speed. That's a one. Because from the last video, we discovered that the Peacekeeper is a 4 walking, 6 running, 3 jumping. Now, we also have to look at the battle mech as though it is a target as well. So, my mech being a target moved 4 hexes. So, if we refer to our sheet, I'll bring this up so everyone can see it. So, there it is. Four hexes is a plus one, and that's for the target. So, a plus one, gonna be in the front. So this is just how how we're gonna mark modifiers. All right. So, as we saw initially, running gives you a plus two. So it's gonna make so the mech's jostling some more. So the it's gonna be harder for the pilot to make the shots. So. Going at 60 kilometers per hour as opposed to 40, it's a little bit faster. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, we're going to put a plus two. We're going to put a two in the back. We're going to put a two in the front because that is now in the five to six hex range, or five to six hex bracket. Next up, we will do a test of jumping. So, since this battle mech has a three jump, we can jump in one, two, three. So now that the 95 ton assault mech is flying through the air, you have a three in the back, and that accounts for just the difficulty of keeping this thing under control. Now, when you look at a flying mech, you're going to see first off, it covered three hexes. So three hexes gives it a gives it a one, three, because it's the three to four bracket. So now that he's covered three hexes, he gets a one automatically, and because he's jumping, which is an additional single point, it's now up to two. Because now, if this mech being a target, is going to be flying through the air. So, it's going to be a, so the opposing mech has to aim up in the air and track this guy flying through the air. So it's a little bit harder for the opponent to shoot him while he's in the air. Now we're going to do this as though two battle mechs are fighting each other. So we're going to move the battle master. He's going to be running six hexes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So as you see there, he's expended his six movement points, but he only covered five hexes. The five hexes are good, still good for a two defensive modifier, as if he was a target. So we will throw that two in the front. And then he ran, so it's also two in the back. So next up with Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper's gonna engage. So his he has a six for a run as well. So he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. Turn one hex side. So he ran for a two. And he also covered five hexes. He covered five hexes in turn once, and that expended all six of his movement points. So now he's up to a two in the front. So now the way this works, I'm gonna, from the perspective of the peacekeeper, he is the attacker. So he would use the modifier in the back as the attacker for running versus the modifier in the front for the defender, for the target, for having moved five hexes. And it's the same exact thing on the way back. The battle master is the attacker was running, so he has that two in the back. And the peacekeeper, having moved five hexes, gets a two in the front. 
So for one last recap, when the peacekeeper is, is trying to figure out how hard the shots are going to be, he's going to be using the number in the back, the number in the front, and then the battle master shooting at the peacekeeper is going to use the number in the back of him and the number in front of the peacekeeper. As a final thought, there is also the ability for other players to watch and add up the numbers as well. If everyone in the group is using the same pilot and gunnery skills, then they can also calculate the numbers out. So that way, if someone just miscalculates and misses a light wood in the way or just doesn't add a number in, guys can be like, hey, hold on one second, and then add it all up, and then the player will be like, oh, okay, so that, that's why I need to roll. So then they can roll for their number. So it's a good way to just make sure everything stays consistent and all the players are getting the right numbers for the rolls that they need. My next video is going to be how to get the to hit roll. So we're going to be using all these modifiers again. I'll show the sheet at the beginning of the next video, and I will see you guys then. Thanks.